In our calendar of things appropriate for Friday, it is National Cocktail Day. A mixed drink, of course, can be a fun way to celebrate an event, take a trip, or just relax and hang out. Everybody usually has a favorite. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to say it now. Yeah. I, I have, t okay, I got two right now. Martinez, which was before Martini, which is What's in it? Uh, gin, vermouth, and then Luxardo, which is a cherry liqueur. Okay. Or The Godfather, which I've been doing a lot of, which is Amaretto or Di Sirono and Scotch. What do you got? What was the one you made me make while I was house? Made you make? That was the Martinez. You didn't like it, though. I didn't oh. like it. Yeah. You didn't like it, it. was, okay. he makes very intense yes. cocktails. Yes. It's boozy. Yeah. yeah. It was good. I enjoyed it. What do you yeah. guys, you're I, not going to say what your favorite is? I, it's, I'm sort of like a soda water with something. I'm usually well, a fan of that. Well, you Miller last I do, weekend. I know, yeah. but it's not a cocktail, yeah. <laughs> uh, Manhattan, all the way. Okay. Easy. That's so all you guys are fancier for me. The cocktail we want to highlight today is actually the pina colada. Legend has it. The drink was popular popularized by a pirate looking to boost his crew's morale. That's one way to do it. The International Bartenders Association recipe is simple. Five parts white rum, three parts coconut cream, and five parts pineapple juice. You can blend it with ice or just serve the three ingredients over ice. And if you like pina coladas and getting songs stuck in your head, you'll want to check out our conversation with songwriter Rupert Holmes, who wrote Escape, the pina colada song. Here's Rob Caldwell with the conversation from last summer. Storytelling is at the heart of your biggest commercial success, Escape, the Pina Colada song. When you're out and about and you hear that in a restaurant, a supermarket, on the car radio, whatever, what goes through your head? It never fails to delight me and excite me. I know it sounds ridiculous. If I'm walking down the street and someone drives by in a convertible and I'm coming out of their radio, I want to go, hey, uh, uh, but just so you, that's, I'm, I'm with, you know. I was tired of my lady together too long. Oddly enough, the original line that you wrote was not, if you like pina coladas. Yeah, you talk about things changing your life. I was 10 seconds away from recording the vocal to this song, and I had written the lyric, if you like Humphrey Bogart and getting caught in the rain. And just before I was going to do the vocal, I thought, Humphrey Bogart, that's a black and white image. That, that, that's noir. And yet this couple is looking for something exciting, an escape, like going to, the, going to the tropics, going to the islands. So when you go to the islands and you're on the beach, you never order your first day out on, on vacation. You never order a Budweiser. You order some tropical drink that announces that you're... So I thought, what, is, what are the escape drinks? What would, they, what would be the metaphor for that? And I thought, Mai Tai, daiquiri, pina colada. I'd never had a pina colada in my life. And I went, let's see, if you like... If you like Humphrey Bogart, no. If you like pina coladas, I said, oh, add an eighth note. That rhythm bounces more. I said, I'll make it that. If you like pina coladas and get caught in the rain. It's terrifying when you think about a decision that you made in a matter of seconds that ended up influencing the next 45 years of your life. All right, we're going to play pina colada trivia. Okay. The pina colada is the national drink of A, Cuba, B, Puerto Rico, C, Old Orchard Beach. Oh, is this a trick question? I, my, my honest answer would be I assume it is Puerto Rico. Correct. That's good. Question number two. The key ingredient in a pina colada is rum, vodka, coffee brandy. Well, we can do that by process, process of elimination. It is not coffee brandy. It's just kind of like when people make chocolate martinis. I say, if it's chocolate, there's no, that's not a martini, okay? No charge. So, yes, it's rum. It's rum. National Pina Colada Day yes. falls on the date of A, February 24th, B, February 29th, <laughs> C, July 10th. You've done your research. Yes, it should fall on February 24th because that's my birthday. Ding! <laughs> but it actually falls on? On the third one. July, what is it? 10th. 10th, thank you. I don't actually personally celebrate it um, because I have pina coladas handed to me all year round every other day of the year. Escape, the pina colada song, yes. was the first pop song to hit number one on the charts in two different fill-in-the-blank. Decades. Top of the chart for two decades, almost without interruption. Last month in 1979, yes. first month in 1980. Yes. You mentioned this before, but before you wrote the pina colada song, in your entire life, how many pina coladas had you actually consumed? I've kept track, and there was, I actually never had had one. 
I, I, zero. I only tried zero pina coladas. Had no idea what they tasted like. The first time I had one was when I was performing the song at a pr presentation for my first album, and someone said, "We got some pina coladas, you know, to celebrate your song." And I thought, well. Might as well find out what they taste like. I think you're five for five, so let's go for the bonus question. The oh. final one, number six on our list. I have control of the board. <laughs> you have control <laughs> of the board. How much would you like to wager? No. Um, here is the last question. Escape hit number one in December of 79. It got knocked off from the number one spot by a song by Casey and the Sunshine Band, but then it went back to number one in January of 1980. What song knocked it from the number one position for good? Ah, uh, that's tricky. Um, boy, you're going to get me this time, okay? I'm sorry I bet everything on this, on this last, uh, on the final Jeopardy question here. Um, <laughs> I'm going to guess, my, I would narrow it down, I would guess Still by the Commodores or Rock With You by Michael J. Oh, wait, was it Streisand and Donna Summer, Enough is Enough? No, no, I knocked them off the charts. You um, had it, you, you, were, you were almost there. Almost there? You, you had it in your grasp and then you let but it slip But not Michael through. Jackson, not Michael Jackson. It is Rock With You? Rock with you, Rock by with Michael you. Jackson. Well, I, do you know I actually went to uh, Gary, Indiana, when Michael Jackson was six years old. I had heard them at the Apollo Theater, the Jackson Five. This is before they signed with Motown. I was going to try to get a record deal for the family. I met the father. I met Jermaine. I taught Jermaine how to play bar chords. And I was in their home in Gary, Indiana. They were on a label called Steel Town Records. And when Michael knocked me off the charts, that's now I remember. When Michael knocked me off the charts, I thought. That little boy was six years old, just knocked me off the charts and more power to him. That's a great story. It's true. Rob Caldwell spoke with Rupert Holmes last summer when the Agunkwit Playhouse put on The Nutty Professor. It was a musical he helped write. So I have never had a pina colada. That's surprising. I, I sipped like a virgin one when mm. I was probably 13. Yeah. I tried it and I did not like it. So I've never tried adding the alcohol. You, right. know, you don't alcohol. like uh, just like pineapple and I'm surprised by that. Yeah. yeah I like good. pineapple. Yeah. And I like coconut, but I did not like, I like, like rum. So I, I think this is a winner for you. <laughs> Ooh, he knows you. This was a big fan of it. It was too sweet. She's a Malibu girl. I get it.